Somebody once told me that all my paintings were one color, <laughs> gray. It is true that uh, I, I'm not very fond of uh, bright colors. I prefer subdued harmonies. Although occasionally now I, uh, I would introduce a, a little bit of, of bright color, perhaps a bit of red as a point of interest. The colors which I normally use, the so-called Tom Kerr colors, are um, raw umber, French ultramarine, Viridian, Alizarin Crimson, and Yellow Ochre. You have a couple of really good quality large civil brushes and whenever possible to use good quality watercolour papers if you can afford handmade papers so much the better as far as I'm concerned I prefer to paint from sketches I have uh, oh, a vast number of sketches done over a long time and uh, I still sketch very frequently and uh, I still get these out and uh, go through them every now and again to see if there's something that uh, I can paint again and possibly paint in a slightly different way. I work uh, on an architect's drawing board when I'm at home. It's <laughs> it holds you up when you're tired. You, can, you certainly couldn't rest. And some of the flimsy easels I've tried quite a few. Some of the group can manage easels, especially outdoors. Um, I'm not very keen. It's it's very difficult to get into a comfortable position anyway when you're painting, and it's, it's very hard to have everything just exactly where you want it. As far as I can remember, even from my very early school days, I was interested in drawing. I can certainly remember reading through and through three volumes which my father got for us as children called The World's Greatest Paintings and enjoying the reproductions. An office friend gave me a whole bundle of artist magazines dating way back to the 1940s. And once again, I studied these avidly, especially the, the articles relating to watercolor. And uh, I remember I was greatly inspired by a series written by Wycliffe Eggington and by the type of watercolour which of his which was reproduced in the magazines. But gradually I uh, improved enough at this to complete the odd painting and uh, the start of the group occurred because of um, a demonstration which I gave to the first demonstration that I have given was given to the Bangor Road Young Wives and Janet Campbell and B came to me afterwards and and asked if they could uh, if I would if I would help them to to paint in watercolours and that was really the the start of the group which is 
gone on from strength to strength and and the group was very good we meet once a week and uh, produce what we call our homework our work done during the intervening period and everybody looks at this and encourages encourages the artist says how nice it is <laughs> uh, we do very well I paint in the direct style normally in two washes first wash moving from the sky down through the landscape and picking up middle distance and the second wash the foreground in greater detail and leaving only final detail to be added at a later date the fact that I am an impatient painter and very often don't wait until one stage is dry before I apply another stage may also add to the misty effect that's not to say that on occasions I don't work in a different fashion I very often now apply a series of glazes or light washes drying between each one and using the hair dryer to hurry it on because watercolour is at its best normally when it's clean and clear and applied and not worked over applied quickly and not worked over uh, there is a great temptation to produce watercolours which are slick uh, and which do not have a good artistic content I think it's true that clarity of colour and quickness of application are very important but by the same token I don't always think I don't think that uh, a painting which is carefully worked over is necessarily a ruined painting uh, very often if it's skillfully done it can be a very successful painting we have very good summer outings which I think really help us a lot. We do a lot of painting outdoors. The group exists very much as a um, what a cohesive body, all anxious to develop their watercolour standards. I don't think there's any danger of them becoming 36 or 40 Tom Kerr clones. They're all individuals in their work and uh, I think if I was shown unsigned paintings by everyone in the group I could have a pretty good stab at being able to put an end to each one of them. In common with uh, most artists that I know I find it difficult to paint outdoors quality of light changes very frequently um, you can be disturbed by even uh, gentle breezes that uh, roughing the paper that you're painting on or by flies or the, the heat of the sun drying up the colors too quickly um, although having said that uh, uh, 
being in completed, completed outdoors very often is a quality that you can't recapture in a studio painted painting. It has a sparkle and a freshness all of its own. But colour, I think that uh, the um, the whole business of colour and form in painting is one of the most complex and complicated aspects of art. I don't know whether people actually see the same colours when they look at things. It's always mystified me. If you set if you set six good artists to copy a painting, they presumably would all make a very good copy of the painting. And if you set six artists to uh, out in the open to copy well, not necessarily I know, but anywhere to copy some form in front of them, be it a landscape or still life or whatever, they would all be different. Uh, the colours possibly different, and uh, the forms themselves different. There's always a, a very happy atmosphere at the group meetings and outings. They all work well together. It's very nice to see a remote harbour in Donegal or a foreshore in County Down be spattered with would-be artists in all sorts, shapes and sizes each one doing his or her best to paint a masterpiece. A fully loaded brush applied to paper must be one of the one of the most enjoyable parts of watercolouring them to see um, see the effect of flowing liquid colour onto the texture of the paper. Um, good silver brushes should point well, and uh, as I say, the bigger the brush, the better. Uh, people are inclined to use brushes which are much too small and uh, they don't carry enough and therefore they find it difficult to apply the paint to the paper. If a brush is big and comes to a good point you can do quite fine lines uh, because you have a good reservoir of uh, water. Having said that, um, the emphasis on good brushes should also allow a little bit of experimentation and uh, there should be scope for using other materials. People can paint with their fingers, with sponges, with the wrong end of the brush. They can scrub out the, the uh, variety of things that can be done on watercolour. Uh, are legion. There can be scratching out, there can be uh, masking fluid, all sorts of things, blotting paper. But basically, you are equipping yourself with good brushes. Well, the group has 
gone on from strength to strength. Uh, we now have, I think it's three, three and the Ulster Watercolour Society and uh, a few in uh, the Society, the Ulster Women Artists Society. And I'm quite sure there are those who would get into them if they if they made the effort. We have acquired a cottage for the group in Donegal. Sleeve Care Cottage, although we've only had it this summer, it has been a, a great success and uh, admittedly this has been a such a good summer that we've had great pending weather but we have also had some typical Donegal weather and uh, I think actually the painting that I like best of the ones I've done there was, was what I choose to call rain and mist at Dunaff. But it's been a great success. And I think there is not a shadow of doubt that the longer we paint, and the better we become, the more we become aware of our shortcomings the more we become aware of the great gap which exists between our standard of painting and the professional artist most of our work is directed toward an exhibition which we have now got to hold once a year started off in the Grand Art Gallery Noel Cook organized that but uh, after a couple of years he stopped his gallery closed and uh, we handled the exhibition ourselves gave the commission to charity and uh, it really has been uh, a highlight, uh, an annual highlight really in the, in the group's existence and uh, sales have been very good and I know that, that a lot of sales or a proportion of the sales are helped because it's for charity and also because we have, as everybody has in these things folk who are more sympathetic to us but uh, we do really stand fairly well on our own feet and uh, it's a great thrill to see paintings being sold to complete strangers uh, and realise that uh, as I said <laughs> somebody's daft enough to buy, <laughs> buy one of your paintings that is not to say that We should be downhearted or despair about our efforts because I think that uh, given the right conditions we can turn out paintings of which we can be proud. At the end of an evening spent with the group, I can sometimes be a bit whacked, a bit tired. <laughs> Very often somebody will say to me, how can you be bothered with them? Well, the answer is pretty easy. As long as they can be bothered, I can be bothered. Because it cuts both ways. And I honestly believe but I owe as much to the group as the group owes to me.